Welcome to Mana's Seal YouTube channel. The previous video link is on the description box or on the top right card. Volume 15 The Half Elf God King. Although he should have responded immediately, the suddenness shocked him to a stop. Turning to look at the source of the voice, Shon found a single elf. There wasn't supposed to be anyone here, there was no mistake about that. There should be no elves other than the target present. He even took care to use, see invisibility while approaching the target. Human, did you know? That fighting with the strong, with one's life on the line, is the fastest way to become stronger. Though I took her away from her mother and threw her into the battle immediately, thinking that she was a success. The voice sounded disappointed. The elf looked at the girl's dead body with scorn. You useless shit. You are even worse than the other failures for wasting my time. As I thought, people who can't bring forth the king's essence are no different than trash. Shon already understood who the elf was. His heterochromatic eyes were clear enough proof. The final target of the theocracy. A deplorable criminal. It was the elf king. An existence that even heroes couldn't win against, never mind Shon. Someone above even the outliers. There was no chance of victory. Silent magic invisibility. Shon panicked, immediately activated the spell, and moved a short distance. Yet, the elf king's eyes followed him. Even though he just moved a short distance from the place where he cast invisibility, the elf king clearly saw him. The moment he realized that, Shon ran with his back turned to the elf king. He can't hide the grass being trampled by him even if he was using invisibility and silence, but he couldn't stop running. Still, the Elf King didn't shift his gaze even a bit from Shon. It didn't seem like he was using sea invisibility to see him perfectly. He was seeing through invisibility and silence with just his extraordinary sight. That was why Shon had to create some distance between them. If the opponent was not using anti-stealth abilities to find him, only increasing the space between them would make it easier to hide. For just a moment, he regretted not using flight to escape, but he couldn't do it anyway because of one of the classes he acquired. Adepts of Sershana had a special ability with a limited number of uses per day. This ability allowed them to extend the effective time of a spell by consuming their mana. Taking advantage of that ability, he had already exhausted most of his mana to maintain his other spells. Therefore, he did not have enough mana to effectively use fly. Also, one would have to be mad to use fly as it made them defenseless, while within the reach of the Elf King. Shon wasn't that desperate yet. It was more practical to use it after he could get far away enough and hide him in the trees. Ha. He heard the Elf King scoff behind him. It's meaningless to kill you people, but I went through all this trouble to come here, so I might as well do it to relieve my boredom. As a magic caster, Shon wasn't exactly skilled at moving his body. Even so, as someone who stood at the boundary to the realm of heroes, he could cross vast distances with little effort. After Shon managed to get far enough away, the Elf King's voice suddenly echoed in his ears, which were strengthened by Elephant Ear. Go, kill everyone, Behemoth. The land shook around him. He understood that something huge had appeared, without needing to look. Disperse. He shouted, cancelling silence so that his voice could reach his subordinates. He had never shouted so loud in his entire life. If the elf king grimaced a bit at this, then it's even better. He needed his subordinates to do their best now, even if it meant throwing away some people's lives as sacrifices. Getting the intel back home was the only way to recompense the lost lives. Shon, who was nearest to the elf king, would certainly die. So he turned back. If he died before his subordinates, that would be a good thing in itself. He had seen earth elementals before. They were weird chubby looking things, smaller than humans and with arms too large for their bodies. But, the one that stood before him was not such a cute thing. A misshapen body made of boulders and mineral ore, and as large as the trees, around it, enough to make one call it the earth elemental lord. Thick and long arms with stout but short legs. Maybe it would have looked comical if it was much smaller, but its arms and legs displayed power that no monster should be capable of. The Elf King stood behind it, looking at Shon's desperate struggle with a sneer. His attitude was absolutely disgusting. Someone who took lips without betting his own. Unconcerned about things like Shon's anger, the Elf King immediately closed the gap between them with graceful movements, as if he was skating over ice. The Earth Elemental Behemoth lifted its two giant arms high into the air. Try me, you piece of shit. Wall of Stone. A stone wall was erected between the Elf King and him. In the very next moment, it was broken with a single strike, with its pieces, melting away into the air. Though there were other factors, the strength and durability of a wall tended to be proportional to the caster's strength. Even so, no, maybe it showed that the elemental summoned by the elf king was just that strong. Behemoth immediately lifted its left fist. 
Shon saw the elf king standing there with a satisfied grin from the corner, his vision, and understood what he was thinking. He knew what would happen. He was probably thinking that Shon would die from the next attack. He was certainly not wrong. The behemoth's fist will reach Shon before he could cast another spell, and then he will die. Even so, I managed to buy some time. He wasted his opponent's time, even if it was only a few moments, but that is enough. It was more than enough. At least one person would survive to return to the theocracy because of this. It's a defeat for Shon, but not for the theocracy. In the next moment, Shon was turned into pulp by Behemoth's fist, with a smile on his face till the very end. The Elf King, Desim Haugen, passed through his castle gate, letting out a sigh, from feeling unpleasant. It took too much time to return to the castle which put him in a bad mood. By riding the indefatigable Behemoth, he likely returned in the fastest way possible. Even so, wasting time was a bore, and he hated the stress it gave him. Retrieving the weapons he gave to his failed creation was certainly not a waste of time, he should in fact be praised for it. The gear he gave her were things he received from his father, things that no one else could make. He could not let them fall into the hands of humans who couldn't understand their value. But, the problem was that there was no one else who could complete such an important task. He didn't have underlings who he could entrust such issues with. It was because all of them were weak. All of them were useless. Elves were a splendid race. His father was the proof of that fact, that they were a race that could become stronger than anyone else. If Desim was a special type of elf like a high elf or an elf lord, he would have concluded that the others were just worse, and that would be the end of it. However, that wasn't the case. His father was also just an elf. This meant any elf could become strong. That's why he couldn't understand why the others were so weak. How could he prove that elves were the greatest race? He just had to achieve something that others could see. He just had to make this world the dominion of the elves, of him who held such a revered bloodline. He required excellent, strong females for that. But, he couldn't be sure which females had superior wombs until the children were nurtured. So, he sent all of his children to fight in the war, but almost none of them managed to return. He was bothered by the fact that even after doing this for such a long time, he had no results to show for it. A female approached Essam, who looked quite menacing as he thought about various things. My king, what is it? He directed his simmering anger at the female, and then slightly widened his eyes with surprise. A strong person's, i.e. Desim's, stare contained within its strong emotions, especially if it was filled with hostility or the intent to kill. As a result, it tended to break weaker beings. Yes, he didn't direct his killing intent at her, only his anger. Even so, weaker beings should still be affected, and though this female went pale, she withstood it. She was just supposed to be a weak female. In that case, how does she withstand his ore? Perhaps it was because he was exhausted. He didn't really care, but he should reward her for being able to withstand it. So, he stopped to look at her. Desim was a merciful lord. How is that child? Who is that child supposed to be? What exactly was she thinking by asking him such meaningless questions, instead of first thanking the king for his hard work after a long trip? He lost his motivation immediately. I am asking about Ruby. Ruby. He didn't remember such a name. Desim can't really remember names, because there was almost no one who was worthy enough to be remembered by him. From his point of view, remembering useless names was a waste of memory. It's not that his memory was limited, but there's no meaning to using his memory for unimportant things. In fact, he couldn't understand why so many people try to memorize useless things. The female shifted her gaze to the bow in Desim's hands. So, she died, something clicked in him. It was about that failure, the one who managed to die even though he gave her such precious weapons. He felt ashamed that half of the blood that flowed in her veins was his own. No, rather, it was because it was not more than half that she got killed by someone like humans. Yeah, she died it is, that so, her, her voice trembled. She was also probably feeling ashamed upon remembering that her blood flowed through that failed creation, but that failure was still stronger than her. This female should be even more ashamed. But it was the king's duty to give people a chance. Desim felt moved at how gentle a king he was that he would show mercy even for the incompetent. Come to my room later. I will give you another chance. Desim started walking without waiting for a reply. He should get these weapons to the treasury first. After he returned from the treasury, Desim washed off the dirt from the battlefield and laid on the bed in his room. While he was waiting like that, a man came requesting his permission to enter. He couldn't see that female anywhere behind him. What is it? I have information for the king. The woman summoned by the king, named Mayugi, has committed suicide. Suicide. Yes. She did it by jumping from the castle. What? 
She died from falling from just that height. No, I forget that you people are only that strong. Desson pondered for a bit. He couldn't think of a reason for her suicide. First of all, he had just summoned her to his bed, so she should have been joyful. Maybe, it's not suicide, but instead, she got murdered by someone who envied her. Are you sure that it's a suicide? Yes. We are sure, as there was someone who saw her do it. Desson thought for a moment that maybe that witness was the murderer, but, if it really was a suicide, what could have been the reason? After he mulled it over, for a while, Desson finally found the answer. I see, so it's something like that. I understand now. She was sorry for giving birth to a useless daughter, and killed herself as an apology, right? Only she can know her true feelings, but you are probably right, my king. The man replied with an expressionless face. In that case, give her a fitting funeral. She used her life to apologize after, all. Oh, it's a king's duty to forgive others. I am grateful for my king's merciful consideration. Desim nodded regally at the man who was bowing deeply. As he thought, kings should be merciful like this to useless beings. Feeling extremely compassionate, Desim decided to reward the loyal man. He didn't remember his name in front of him. Do you have any daughters? Yes, I do. You are fortunate. Send them here if they are already of age. If they aren't, your wife works too. The man looked like he was deeply moved. After his body shook all over, he spoke like he was trying to squeeze the words out. Understood, my king. He left the room and Desim proceeded to forget about that female. He didn't care about what happened to some useless female.